every single civilization that has disappeared, one of the prime factors has been loss of topsoil. And we're doing the same thing again. And we're creating deserts, which is exactly what these civilizations did. I was actually searching for land here in the Algarve. The prices are growing exponentially and uh, it's super complicated to buy land. I really believe in what I am doing. I'm very stubborn. I'm really concerned with the future of my daughter in this planet. I need to do something. As hard as it comes, I just need to create an alternative. The first time I visited the land um, was very much at the beginning when I got to know Joanna and um, she asked me to help a little bit in her little space that her grandmother gave her to do a hugel culture. At some point we walked in the land and she showed me the place, telling me about her dream. Look, this area, which is not planted with orange trees, it would be just so amazing to use it for environmental education, for projects that we want to do. And I really felt, wow, okay, this is perfect. But she didn't like so much the conditions her grandmother was putting on her. So she decided, no, I don't want to do it. It was amazing how the place was so eroded, how few vegetation was actually growing there for 15 years. So we found no topsoil. So I'm Joanna. Me and Zuna, we are part of a New Loops Association. It has been a big challenge for myself to accept that this was the best place uh, to do this project. Because, of course, I was fighting with my family that I don't want a monoculture near me. We were lost for a couple of months trying to search for alternatives. But there is never a perfect alternative. Every place had its own trouble. So in the end, we decided to make a compromise. Hope that in the future, what we are doing here can inspire other people and change something. The water was just not infiltrating. So all the water would just run off and with it, it would take all the topsoil and all the potential seeds. So this was the most important work we could do at this moment. It's just to you know, redesign the landscape in order to infiltrate the water. Our agricultural practices, even the more primitive ones are ultimately pretty destructive. So we've been turning the soils for 10, 12,000 years, and all the time we're killing off the soil life. It's blowing away in the wind, it's washing away in the rain. It always amazes me that it's a lesson we never learnt. Basically, permaculture is a design system, a framework for creating energy efficient designs to supply basic human needs whilst honoring the needs of all the plant and animal communities with which we share this planet. In academics it's everything very strict, everyone works on its own speciality, whereas permaculture is a holistic thinking, so you try to combine all the different sciences, all the different fields. And this I felt much more in tune. Things are not getting better. We are doing a lot of science on conservation, on restoration of uh, landscapes, but our planet is still suffering. And I think what is going wrong is that in academics, we, due to the pressure of funding, we are just thinking on publishing papers. And we miss a part of how we can actually bring our science, our knowledge, to the people that really need it, to the people that could make the change. So when we started the tour, I knew that I will have to facilitate a session for the first time. 
So I was very nervous and I was like, oh my God, and it's, what are I going to do with the participants for three hours? So the idea is to have a, a sort of a permaculture pilot uh, project as a teaching platform. So when the participants come, they can actually see what people mean in books and uh, in videos or just by hearing from it. A place where you can see the techniques implemented. I don't know what happened. I just, we started and I felt so relaxed and, and confident with the group. And they were so nice and curious about the topics. So this was a moment like, okay. I'm here in the right place. I'm doing the right thing. And this was for the first time since um, two, three years, the first moment that I felt like this. First, we collected a lot of dead wood in the forest. We are doing a, a hubel culture here to plant nitrogen fixing trees as a pioneer plant that will grow fast and that will give us a shade and also protection of wind. So we are doing this here to plant our first trees on site. I think that is the thing that grabs me about permaculture. It's about regenerating our wilderness. It's about regenerating our communities. It's about regenerating ourselves and giving um, the planet hope unto the next seven generations. For me, Leslie was a very important person as well in the birth of our organization because kind of Leslie guided us in the path of how you create an organization, you know, so you need people. We can reconnect to nature, but if we don't reconnect to someone that sits next to us, what are we going to change? Nothing. We can be isolated living in a, in a house, in our own built house in the jungle or in the forest or whatever, but if uh, the rest of the society continues living like it is now, that person that lives in the jungle alone will not survive. O interessante entre o grupo da New Loops é que somos todos muito diferentes, mas complementamos-nos com essa diversidade, porque ao, ao sermos tão diferentes, preenchemos diferentes campos de, de possibilidades. E então há artes, há ciência, há teatro, há permacultura, há muita coisa envolvida. With sound and vibration. There's a, a whole new world when we close our eyes. Vibration has a totally different perception. Just honoring all the people that have passed in this place before us. All the people that prepared this place for this specific group to arrive and to build something new. So we are grateful for that and all the people that will come after this first experience in the space and people that will see it grow. I mean, it's not possible to start an alternative path without questioning the path that you're taking previously, you know? To observe and analyze yourself, what is your motive? But as well, like, what are your patterns that you don't want to take into an alternative? Are we repeating the same story or not? And uh, how we can transform that into something that is really better. So many times it's hard to also see yourself in the mirror through the others and realize that you are still far from what you want to become. I think there's a lot of personal work that needs to be done in order to unlearn this previous format that we've got. Anything we do, 
everything we share, everything we think is an impact we are leaving for the future generations. And just honor that, the steps you take and what you're leaving behind and the world you want to give to our children and uh, turning hopefully from a bit of a desert to an abundant place. Arts make the link. Arts gives this special tool of that uh, life is a school and they also make synthesis between different knowledges that we have. Uh, we are facilitating, not imposing on people, trying to create exercise dynamics where they actually can uh, try to zoom in even more and to bring them some awareness. <laughs> I find it important that whatever you create, you create really together and deeply together. Create this orchestra and this symphony in a way that sounds beautiful <laughs> and not so much, uh, you know, each one playing their own instrument in their own time. Na minha experiência, eu demorei muito tempo a agir com receio. E normalmente o receio, neste sentido, vem em termos financeiros, estabilidade financeira. Mas, ao fim e ao cabo, chegas ao final da tua vida e, e se calhar não tiveste tanto impacto na sociedade quanto aquilo que deverias ter. Então é esse conselho que eu dou às pessoas. Não duvidarem delas próprias, porque se uma pessoa acreditar, consegue. Eventually, we could create a, a job for ourselves. We didn't manage so well so far. We are learning how to be more pragmatic and effective and learn how to flow in this financial system. I would urge people to be very practical because a lot of projects fail because there isn't enough money or there isn't enough manpower to implement the overall vision that is created in the beginning. For the people that want to do something nice and want to reconnect in this nature and regenerating nature, it's becoming very difficult because those people normally don't have much money. Very rich people from all over the world come to this place and us being able to do the total opposite and alternative and sustainable and going back to nature, it's very nice, it's very funny and it has a lot of uh, great opportunities. Sometimes people see the challenges as problems, but actually all these problems and challenges do have within them the seeds of the solution. It's that we change our perception and always look for the opportunities to turn it around. You change your mindset on how you place yourself in this earth instead of damaging to regenerate it. You know, so uh, changing the mindset that you're not human and this is nature, you're nature. You're part of all the fucking process. <laughs>